ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. In other news, male circumcision, or the removal of the foreskin around the penis, symbolizing the oldest, most widely practiced, and most basic tenets of the Jewish covenant with God. But a small group of Reformed Jews in the United States are now looking to modernize the covenant with alternatives to the tradition. Here with the analysis, director of the Rabbinical Assembly for the Conservative Movement, Rabbi Andrew Sachs. Rabbi, thank you so much for being with us. Now, let, let's just start off with the basic. What is the meaning behind Jewish male circumcision, or Brit Milah? The Brit Milah was a mitzvah that was given to Abraham Avinu, to Abraham, as a sign of the covenant that every Jewish child should be brought into the covenant, and it is marked by the Brit Milah on the eighth day. Okay, but so the Bruchim group, which is advocating for this, uh, the alternative to Brit Milah, they call it a Brit Shalom or a, you know, a, a peace. Uh, they argue that most Jews fail to follow halakha to the letter. So why make exception for Brit Milah? What, what's different about circumcision uh, and, and keeping Shabbat or keeping kosher habits? Well, really, there's no difference. Each of them is a mitzvah in and of itself, and that people perhaps are uh, less observant of Shabbat or Kashrut or Brit Milah does not mean that there needs to be a compromise in that area. In fact, just the opposite. We need to encourage and strengthen the identity of Jewish people so that Brit Milah will be the way to go. Uh, I also uh, want to point out that in the introduction, you mentioned controversy within the reform movement. Uh, I'm the director of the Rabbinical Assembly here in Israel, which is the Masorti conservative movement, yeah. where we take a halachic-based approach uh, to Judaism, unlike the Reform Movement, which accepts the autonomy of the individual. So, so would you consider an uncircumcised man to be Jewish? I don't think there is any question that somebody born to a Jewish mother who is uncircumcised is Jewish. I know nobody who would think otherwise, mm. and indeed... Uh, the rabbis have discussed on uh, in many occasions whether such a person is entitled to fully participate in the Jewish community and in ritual life within the synagogue. So again, then, you know, why why would you continue to push other than from the halachic standpoint, as you stated, you know, because that's really just tradition based other than tradition, you know, which is for the sake of doing it, why would you advocate for Jews to continue that tradition of Brit Milah, of, of circumcision? Well, we don't perform Brit Milah simply because it's a tradition. That one can point out, as people do, that there are alternative liturgy, there can be uh, um, aesthetic reasons brought in, there can be medical reasons discussed. But the bottom line is, for us as Jews, there's only one reason to perform a Brit Milah, and that is because there is a mitzvah, that we are obligated by God, by tradition. It's not simply following a custom, but it is an obligation incumbent upon the father, upon the parent of each Jewish uh, baby that is born. Uh, now, in the United States, it's thought that some 90 percent of men are circumcised, uh, obviously most of them are not Jewish, but, uh, and this is because apart from the Jewish tradition, hospitals uh, often just do it. So physically and med medically speaking, you know, what are the pros and cons of the practice? First, I, I, I think you need to recheck your statistics mm. <clears throat> that through the 1970s um, in the United States, we were talking 70, 80 percent were circumcised, but the latest statistics in the United States would indicate that it's probably closer to 60 percent. Mm. Um, and um, the pros and cons, first, once again, one can discuss the pros medically. Uh, for instance, we know that in areas of uh, where it's difficult to, uh, to, to treat HIV, for instance, that HIV virus uh, can thrive underneath the foreskin where there's a warm and moist environment. And thus, it could be that routine medical circumcision can have a side medical benefit. But none of that is relevant to us as Jews. What is relevant is that there is, again, only one reason we perform the circumcision, and that is that there, there is a mitzvah. Whether it is beneficial or not beneficial, it is a sign of joining the Jewish people. How would you respond to, and, and of course I'm not one of these people, but how would you respond to those who would consider male circumcision to be uh, an, an abusive practice? 
Well, I don't really need to, to respond because uh, I'm not here to convince anybody that their approach is correct or incorrect. Um, however, today we have means to alleviate uh, and reduce the pain of the infant, for instance, the use of a topical anesthetic so that the uh, pain that the infant experience is, is quite minimal. All right, Rabbi Andrew Sachs, thank I, you so I think, much. For wait, may I just also say one other thing that I think is extremely important. Those who have suggested that those who are uncircumcised should not be able to participate fully in synagogue and ritual life, I'd like to point out that many of the very important uh, post game, such as uh, uh, Rav Hildesheimer, Rav Spector, all pointed out that we would certainly not deny someone's right to participate in synagogue ritual if they do not keep kosher or they do not keep Shabbat. This is an important mitzvah. It is central to us in Judaism. But the failure to perform one mitzvah does not alleviate that the, the, that person continues to be able to follow, participate fully as a minyan, a call to the Torah, to participate in every way. And a child who is not circumcised at the age of 13 has done nothing wrong because it's the obligation of the father. So there certainly should be no denial of a bar mitzvah boy being called to the Torah who was uncircumcised. Yet at the same time, we want to, in every way possible, encourage the families to perform that mitzvah. Rabbi Andrew Sachs, thank you so much. Thank you.